In this video we will look at three muscles and they are all prone to becoming weakened and lengthened. Now the first one is the serratus anterior. The serratus anterior attaches onto the first eight to nine ribs and then it will go onto the medial inferior border of the scapula. And the serratus is mainly responsible for allowing the shoulder to protract. Also when you lift your arm over your head then the serratus anterior controls the upward rotation working with the upper trapezius and the lower trapezius. One simple way of testing it, we can go against a wall and do the, the typical wall push-up test. But the way I like to do it is, have the arm of the patient straight, clench the fist, and then if I was to palpate the medial border of the scapula, and if I apply pressure and my patient is protracted and I resist the protraction, and then the scapula is now has a tendency to wing, as in the medial border is now more prominent and I can hook my fingers over it, then that might indicate a weakness of the serratus anterior. Myself, I dislocated my shoulder many years ago and, um, and I think as a result of that I damaged the auxiliary nerve which supplies the deltoid and I also think I damaged the nerve that supplies the serratus anterior which is called the long thoracic nerve and it comes from C5, C6 and C7. And if you look at my shoulder, if I do the similar sort of test, then you can see that the scapula has a tendency to wing, okay, quite obviously. And because it's probably nerve damage, it's a tricky one to try to, to, to basically try to fix that. Because you might find that the more the nerve has been damaged, it's not going to, to regenerate. Now, that would be the serratus test. Let's look at um, the rhomboids. The rhomboids, if you bring your head forward, and then we've got C7, T1 will be minor, and then from T2 down to T5 will be major, and then they will fill the medial board of the scapula. One way is to get the patient to interlock the fingers, like this, and ask the patient to pull their fingers apart so they are adduct in the scapula. Again, if you notice one scapula has a tendency to wing compared to, or flare is another word they would use, then that might indicate a weakness of the rhomboid muscles. In this case, they look level, yeah, so it looks equal between left and right. The last one is the lower trapezius. The lower trapezius is, if I brought my patient's arm up, into what we call the scapular plane here. And the lower trapezius will be where my fingers are from the lower part of the thoracic spine. And this muscle here works alongside the upper to rotate. But one way of quickly testing it is, I tend to use two fingers and I'm going to push my patient this way and my patient is going to resist and I'm going to palpate the lower trapezius where my fingers are and I'm going to push. And if I can easily overcome my patient, then it would indicate an obvious weakness of the lower trapezius. So there we have serratus anterior, rhomboid, and lower trapezius testing.